All right, everybody, welcome back to the world of the LCUS. This is Top vs. Bot, first episode of Split 5. I am Jeff, joined by Gregor Soros Rex. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar with the format, it's uh, basically this or that with Kobe and Jet. Um, well, not we Jet have, anymore, though. Yeah, RIP Jet, uh, the original best caster. But... Um, yeah, so what do we have? Nine slides? Eight slides? I actually have no idea how many slides, so it'll be a, a fun okay. surprise. We have some number of slides. And An undetermined no amount of slides. slides. And apparently we don't even know what's on the slides. Could be uh, could be Kardashian stuff, could be League stuff, who knows. Um, neither topic am I that knowledgeable on. Um, but hopefully I can fake it a little bit. Hopefully it's not the Kardashians. So uh, I guess just to get right into it, you ready, Greg? Absolutely. All right. First slide. Let's go. So, um, worst button to break, <laughs> Q versus R. That's, hmm. Oh, I'm like trying to go over every single champion. Yeah, it's like, it's like it really depends on your champion, right? Yeah, right? Um, I mean, I guess, I guess I would say R. Or no, I would say Q. I would say I'd rather have R break. Because if Q breaks, you're screwed, like, from a lot of champions level one. If R breaks, like, you know, you can maybe still work around it. Um, doesn't I, affect your early game. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think I agree with that. I think I would get too tilted by everyone else being able to ult and you're not being able to <laughs> ult. I guess the only time that I would be okay with uh, your R being broken is if you're one of those champions that doesn't have a standard ult like Udyr. I'd be fine without Phoenix Dance, I guess. Um, yeah. Some of those champions that don't have standard ults, though, would still be pretty awful, like on Jace, if you were stuck oh, in God, yeah. hammer form Good point. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he um, suddenly gets very bad. Yeah, you're right. But at the same time as Jace, if you don't have Q, then you can't Shock Blast or jumpy hammer whatever the name of that ability is right um oh man yeah i think i'm gonna say i would rather have my r break but depends so much on the champion you're playing yeah i think that's probably go with q so i guess that would be top so yeah actually i think i see your point there because if q is broken then you can uh sort of choose your champion according to maybe who doesn't use their q very much mm -hmm. yeah that's um, true Okay, so I'm not going to sell out, though. You you made a good argument, but I'm not going to copy you. So. That's fair. But, okay. But I will acknowledge that, that you have a compelling argument, sir. All right. Um, next slide, then. Better position for shot caller, jungle, or support? That's support, mm. right? I think yeah. that's support. I don't know what else it would I be. Have, <laughs> I have selected that icon so few times in my life that I don't even recognize it. That's the only icon Chinese I do character. recognize, so it's probably <laughs> probably <laughs> support. Um, well, do you want to take the lead on this one? I can. Um, which would I rather have as a shot caller? Yeah. I think would probably have to go with jungle. Uh, I feel like you are going to have a better view of the overall map and the position of the enemy jungler if you're doing your job right and tracking it. Whereas from support, you can kind of do that but you're also kind of paying attention to your lane and your fighting in 2v2. Uh, as a jungler, unless you're doing something terribly wrong, you don't need to pay too much attention to auto-attacking the Gromp, for example. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'd probably go top for this one, the jungler. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. I got to go top as well uh, for jungle. That's sort of confusing um, word choices there. But yeah, for me, jungle, um, definitely the best position because you not only have the ability to, you know, I mean, you're literally a global presence, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, supports roam a lot these days, but not at the same level as junglers do. And like you said, I like the point you touched on um, with junglers probably being the most familiar player with what the other jungler is doing, um, which is going to be very helpful. And supports have to worry about their own thing in lane. I mm -hmm. mean, maybe less so than an AD carry or a mid laner, but I mean, you still got to dodge hooks and things like that as right. support. As a jungler, like you said, while you're just auto-attacking the Gromp, I mean, really the only thing you have to worry about is, is the other jungler about to come kill me? Um, so, yeah, for me, junglers, they're more aware of just what every position is capable of, how everything's going globally, um, definitely 
I would go with top on this one. So we're in agreement. All right. We are indeed. All right. So for slide three, better position change. Um, two option 12 situations. Fat Lee from the jungle to the <laughs> AD carry and shaken not stirred from top to mid. Um, so are we saying better position change for the team, I guess? Like which one is going to be more successful? Mm, I th think so. I don't. I, are, are you saying like on an individual basis? Uh, probably the team. Otherwise, why yeah. would they do two twelves? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Ace, help, ace. <laughs> All right. So let's go. Uh, let's go for it. As which one will lead to more team success? Mm -hmm. Um, compared to maybe what they would have been in the previous position. Yeah. Um, and for me, I guess. I mean, it's it's not meant as a slight whatsoever. Um, it's honestly sort of a compliment, I guess. I would say shaken, not stirred from top to mid will be the more beneficial change out of the two because I think shaken, not stirred. Um, you know, he obviously has you know good lane mechanics. He's he's a solid player. He understands how to play a lane. Um, and for Fat Lee, it's not that I don't think he'll be a good AD carry. I just think he was a great jungler. And so I think taking him off of jungle, putting him somewhere else is more likely to detract from what your team could have been than Shaken Not Stirred making the change. Yeah, I agree 100%. I'm going bot with this one as well. Um, first of all, because as you mentioned, uh, Fat Lee is one of the best junglers, if not the best jungler. There's certainly some debate that could be had on that. Um, so it's just that much higher of a uh, pedestal that he's put on. And then when you move into any other role, naturally there's going to be a slight, you know, a degrading there. So there's just that much more discrepancy that could be. Uh, the other thing I would mention is Shaken Not Stirred. When he was top, sometimes played like random things like Victor anyway. So he can just play that mid and there's really no difference. Even Scion <laughs> mid is sort of a thing now. So <laughs> I don't necessarily think there's going to be much difference at all there. It's basically not a skill change at all. So yeah, that's probably going to be the, the better for the team overall. Yeah, and not that Fat Lee might not be a great AD carry, mm -hmm, but he for was sure. just such a good jungler that there's more of a chance of a decrease in success. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so next slide. We've agreed a lot. We have. It's something's wrong. Something is wrong. God, mom and dad would have loved us to have been like this when we were kids. It's, uh, yeah, never, <laughs> never actually yeah, happened. Mom and dad. Yeah. Uh, All right. Um, so more, next slide. Then. More unfortunate. First more week by week. More unfortunate. First or week by more. week uh, for option twelve. Last week by week for Blitzkrieg or being Jeff and Greg's parents. Um, well, definitely option C then. Yeah. So we would go mid on that one. But yeah, uh -huh. we're stuck to top and bot. Um, first week by week. Last week by week. I have very strong um, opinions about this one. I would say last week by week. In my yeah. opinion, uh, I'd go bot. Um, just because, you know, by last week, you know, like where everyone is, you know, where the standings fall. I mean, mathematically, it's like, I'm sure there's some mathematician out there who would say there's no difference. Um, and maybe all things being even everyone being a robot, that's true. But, you know, standings pressure, knowing where you are, where you have to be, what you have to do to get there are real things that affect people. And so knowing you have one less week to make up ground in the standings should you start slow is a lot more pressure. And yeah, it really sucks if you uh, get to that last week and everybody just passes you up because you have no way to gain points. Yeah, as I recall, that actually was a thing that happened in the last split as well, where the team on by basically got kicked from, I think it was like second to fourth or something like that. I don't think they got kicked out of playoffs. I don't recall exactly. But the fact that you have to just sit there and watch it happen is awful uh counterpoint to that i actually feel like the first week by week is an advantage because uh, then you just get to sit back and watch the games and see what everyone else is doing so you can get some advanced scouting in so to me this is a a no-brainer bot for sure yeah that's a good point on on the first week as well all right so we're in agreement again Jeez. yeah this is weird all right um so next slide maybe this one will uh change things up. oh my right. god there's a lot to read um, <laughs> yeah Lots of text. Uh, I'm going to let you go first on this one because I kind of <laughs> jumped out there. Yeah, is uh, it because you don't want to read all this stuff? Uh, okay. Uh, you know, I like to hedge my bets. That's fair. 
More excited to see new players, which is Chop Suey, Toxicated, Pola, SMG, Vampy, the Vampire, your favorite name. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Brihio, Envy, Foden, Pointy Ball, or Roll Swaps, which is, you know what? Just read it. I'm not going to read Just, them all. Yeah, other people can read. Can yeah, read. I mean, we assume so. <laughs> Uh, what is more exciting to see? I would point out that I don't think that Envy the Serpent is a new player. I think that's Evil Envy, who has played before. Um, I should know this because I'm his support. I was going to say, do we need a third option of new names? Like, I guess that that's... Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Um, what am I more excited to see? I'm always more excited to see new players, personally. Um... Like, even if it's somebody in a brand new role, like we already talked about Fat Lee going to AD Carry or Shaden moving down to mid um, when he's already played AD Carry and top. Like, at a certain extent, we know what these players are capable of, even if it's mechanically. Sure, put them on a new role. They may do better. They may do worse. But they're a known variable. Uh, these new people, no idea. Uh, and that makes it a lot more interesting at both as a, a viewer and as a player, because it's much harder to scout, much harder to prepare, um, much more dynamic, I think. I think you make a lot of good points there. Um, I'm tempted to side with you again, but I don't want to, because uh, it just feels <laughs> weird that we've been on the same side so many times. So I'm going to try to formulate an argument for role swaps. I was kind of on the fence anyways. Um, for me, you know, seeing guys like Brandana in a new role, um, Ace going back to mid, Menards, Fat Lee, as we talked about before in a previous slide. Um, this is like a situation where those players can really start to cement themselves as elite players in the LCUS. You know, not that, you know, being good at one position isn't already impressive, but if you can be a really, really good player, a dominant carry level player from multiple spots on your team, um, especially with the way the LCUS is formatted with you having different teammates every single split, that really serves to separate you as an individual in terms of skill level and reputation. So it's sort of cool to see guys trying to step outside their comfort zone. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who steps up, uh, if anybody flops, who flops. So for me, I'm I'm excited to see role swaps. I think it's interesting because I almost feel like we should have a third category for like new players, Role swaps back to like a previously known role or like sure. brand new role swaps because like like you mentioned Ace in the mid lane oh no like no one has ever yeah. seen this before <laughs> oh wait so I think it could be almost divided even further yeah I think get the production team on it we should make Ace play like support or jungle instead and see how that goes I That'd think he would not yeah. like that very much <laughs> that would be yeah that would I would go with that one more excited to see Ace as support let's see it. All right, so uh, so we disagreed on that one at least. Um, we'll move on to our next slide. Looks like we still have a few more for you guys coming up. Uh, <laughs> more one-sided election. <laughs> All right. Um, so as I think most of you know, uh, Sig Tao Lord was uh, elected commissioner. I believe he was the only candidate to begin with. So... Um, I guess I got to go with bot on this one. I mean, because at least in Russia, like maybe there's some uh, facade at least of competition. <laughs> Whereas here in the LCUS, there was, there was literally no other candidate. And I don't think even a write-in space. See, uh, there was a write-in space. Was there? Okay. There was. I, obviously I didn't vote. So um, yeah, sorry guys. All the problems in America are, are my fault. All right. Or at least all the problems in LCUS, yeah. <laughs> all right, what are you taking on this one? I'm thinking I have to go with top, our, uh, our beloved Vladimir Putin. Vladimir. Um, I think it's got to be a more one-sided election that way because, like like you said, there well, there is a right-in spot, so you could pick someone else. However... While there may be a facade of, like, other options in Russia, if you pick them, you might actually be, like, killed. If you pick someone else for commissioner in the LCUS, you're probably not going to be killed. It's not 100%. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. But the likelihood is lower, I think. I think it's safe to say that. Um, now that I've said that, perhaps yeah, I'm going to be killed. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um. <laughs> uh, Sig, don't take me out back, please. I got so much to live for. A forgiving commissioner. We'll see. All right. 
so we disagreed on this one. Um, I guess I'm just more pro-Russia. I guess so. <laughs> All right, moving on. Oh, we're getting into serious content. This here. is an actual um, question. Things that uh, I should study more. So <laughs> I at least know both of these logos. We got better team, G2 versus horse. <laughs> it's uh, Team Liquid. Do you really not know that? <laughs> no, I knew. <laughs> okay, just, just fair Liquid, AKA formerly Curse. Yeah. Uh, okay, so G2 versus horse liquid. Um, <laughs> like Gross, that sounds like horse thing. urine. What the hell? Um, you. you said horse liquid. <laughs> what do you want from me? Uh, no. Better team is G2. Uh, I don't like saying that as someone who lives in NA, but realistically speaking, like Liquid wins their games here. They win them well. G2 is... There is no way to deal with that team because they have pretty much the best players in every position in Europe and arguably in the West in their roles. How do you deal with that? Their their macro is crisp. Uh, they fight really well. Like, they can pick pretty much any champions into any comp and make it work. Uh, I, the only thing that I can see going for Liquid versus G2 is that G2 is probably exceptionally arrogant, but I think they're probably the better team. Um, I'm going to show my NA bias and my double if fanboydom. Uh, that's not a word, but you get what I'm saying. And I'm going to say Liquid. Um, because I'm not looking at it as a head-to-head situation. Um, if they played head-to-head, I'd probably give G2 the advantage because EU tends to just always beat NA in head-to-head. Um, but I'm looking at it as more more likely to be successful against the field. And I think that G2, they have really, really good players um, across so many of their positions. But I think that, in general, the EU macro game is less consistent um it can pull on upsets on korean teams and things out of nowhere they can do really well especially with highly skilled players like caps um but i think that liquid has a lot of veterans on their team i think that they are they still have a lot of room to grow too with core jj coming in there so i think if you put these two teams um you know against say at a tournament like msi uh, where everybody's playing everybody, I think G2 might be Liquid, but I think Liquid is less likely to get upset by a team like frickin' Gigabyte Marines or something like that. <laughs> That's fair. Good point. All right. So, one more, or are there two more? I'm not I sure. Yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> next slide. Uh, next one up. Worst team! Uh, is that That's Golden Guardians. Golden um, Guardians in Rogue. And rogue yes. yeah they're in lec um yeah um ugh. i honestly don't know much about rogue um they're Golden bad guardians has froggen so that's kind of cool even though i don't think froggen's really that good anymore um i guess i'm gonna go rogue um because i like froggen but uh clearly i'm not gonna be too much help on this one yeah that's and a bias <laughs> Rogue yeah. is worse. Just like G2 is worse. Just like Deficio is worse than Jat. Um, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was just going to let you keep going see how far you could go. Um, <laughs> I have to go with Rogue uh, as the worst team. Um, Well, actually, now that I think about it... No, I changed my mind. Golden Guardians is the worst team. Here's why. Um, <laughs> G2, I feel like... As far as the best team in NA versus EU, like I think G2 is probably the, the number one between the two regions. However, the rest of the field in Europe is like, there's like a couple really good teams and then a couple meh teams and then like a lot of, frankly, in my opinion, very bad teams. <laughs> um, and if a lot of very bad teams exist in the same region and then like one team can't sometimes pick up wins against all those other bad teams, then they must be the worst team. Logically. Uh, whereas Golden Guardians, like, n- maybe not so much the case in NA. Unsure. Um, plus, you know, Froggen. So. <laughs> so you're, wait, so are you going bot or top? <sighs> you know, I changed my mind about four times during this. Um, <laughs> you know what? Rogue. Rogue is worse. We agree. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> we did it. So we, we, we agree again. We got back to, uh, to some harmony. All right. Next slide coming up. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> <laughs> More boring to watch. FlyQuest versus CLG or the beloved Super Bowl of the world's favorite team, New England Patriots, against the LA Rams. Well, um, do you want to go first on this one? Oh, I, yeah, I can. Um, here's the thing. They're both awful. Absolutely <laughs> awful. However, the more boring one to watch... See, I wish it wasn't the more boring one to watch. I think it's, like, worse to watch. Because if it was worse to watch, I would say the Super Bowl. Uh, because... You watch the first the half. Outcome? No, it's, it's because you watch the first half of it, and you're like, oh, this is boring. Maybe at least the halftime show will be good. And you get excited that maybe it won't be awful, and then the halftime show is terrible. And then the <laughs> second half of the game is also terrible. So, like, there was a break in the middle where, like, you got your hopes up, and then you're depressed again. Whereas CLG FlyQuest, you're just depressed the whole way through. And there's no Adam Levine halfway through with the shirt off to possibly help. Um, although maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. The more boring one... Probably FlyQuest versus CLG, but the worst one was the Super Bowl. Hmm. All right, we're going next level with the uh, with the analysis here. Oh man, such disappointment. Um, I guess I would go top. Um, I only watched highlights of that game to be fair, so I probably didn't get the full experience. But um, you know, I'm a big sports nerd, so. Seeing a defensive struggle in the Super Bowl wasn't as bad for me as it might be for people who uh, just like to see a lot of scoring. Uh, I think a, a football game where it's low scoring is still can still be exciting uh, because it just makes every first down and every big play that much more important. Um, but I don't want to get too much on my sports soapbox here. Uh, when it comes to FlyQuest for CLG, um, I was disappointed in it because we didn't even get to see wild turtle do something ridiculous and stupid uh <laughs> which is like what i would expect to be the main source of excitement when you're watching a fly quest game so i would go top on this one uh because i think yeah the super bowl sucked but um i was okay with it other than the outcome yeah um, i guess dlg like why do you even exist i guess the other part of it is like when you're watching the Super Bowl, regardless of how it goes, you're going to be drinking with your friends and having a good time mm -hmm. and, you know, that sort of thing. Whereas FlyQuest versus CLG just made me want to become an alcoholic. So, <laughs> I Wait, guess... You, you, you didn't throw a FlyQuest versus CLG party? Uh, I did not. Okay. And if I had, I'm glad that I didn't. That would have been awful. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, definitely no, I worse. I, I would not have come. But that's uh, Shoot, I would have dodged out too myself. It's your own party. Yeah, that's how bad the game was. <laughs> all right so we agree we do. do we agree i forget i forget if you, you uh, said one was worse and one was more boring FlyQuest clg was, was more, more boring in my opinion okay so all right so we agree on top on this one yeah all right and uh maybe last slide moving on to the next one that's it top versus bot uh, we did it is this, is this a slide uh top bot? what's better top is <laughs> actually no well i'm biased i'm in bot so there you go yeah. yeah, I'm going to go bot, because anytime I play top, I just have to teleport and save bot. Anyway, anyway so. right? So it's like you're, <laughs> by proxy, you're there anyway. Okay. Exactly. And the other guy takes ignite and solo kills me, because I brought two things. It's all very upsetting. Not that you're okay. salty or anything? No, no, not at all. No, very, very okay with how that works. And they also play Renekton and Darius all the time. Okay, so, folks, um, I think that pretty much wraps things up for our first episode of Top vs. Bot. Split five. Uh, make sure you tune in Sunday night when we will be kicking things off in week one, option 12 on by. But everybody else is going to be scrapping it out, trying to get their noses in front as we make the push towards the postseason. Anything else you want to say, Greg? Nope. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.